In this video, we're going to look at how you can create the ultimate conversion optimized hybrid sales page using Thrive landing pages. Hello, I'm Shane from Thrive Themes. And today I want to discuss what we call the copy landing page template that has been made available within Thrive Content Builder in the landing pages selection. Now to be clear, this is going to be a training video that is about how to create high converting sales pages of this kind. And if you load this template, so if you go to a page and you go to Thrive Content Builder and you choose this particular template, you will actually see that the template itself is also a set of instructions on how to use the template. So almost all of the copy on this page is actually instructional and explains how to use the page. So really the page itself, you can think of it like as a mini, a mini product. You can load this page and read through the page and you'll have a much better understanding of how this kind of template works and how to make it work for a great sales page that will get great conversions. Like I said in the intro, this is a hybrid sales page. And what that means is it's a hybrid between a traditional long form sales letter and a shorter form, more visual style sales page. And I'll explain a bit more about that in a minute or two. But first, I want to give you a high level overview over how this works. So if we just fly through the entire page, we take a look at, at the top, of course, we have a large heading, we have a subheading, we have a video, and we have a subtitle of the video. It's, it basically acts like an image caption. So people read image captions. It's the second most read element on a page is an image caption after the headline. So we have like a caption like text below the video. And then we have several text blocks. And here's the thing. These text blocks, the first part of the sales page is all about relating. It's all about relating to your reader. And you do that by telling a story, by creating some kind of a storyline that people can relate to, by eliciting emotions. That's really the goal here. Okay, so that's the first part of the sales page. And all of this would not yet be product related. Okay, you're not like saying, you know, here's my product, here are the features and so on and so forth. You're not mentioning any of that yet. You're just relating to your reader. And then as we go further down, we have more and more of these elements and it's still all about relating until we start transitioning into talking about the product and then presenting the product itself. And then we have a first uh, call to action after some testimonials. So you present the product, you've explained what it's about, you add a testimonial or two to add some social proof. These are great conversion boosting elements. And then we have the first part of the page where it's a call to action where we basically say, buy this thing now and a purchase button. And right below that, we have a money back guarantee or a satisfaction guarantee, whatever you want to call it. So these work together, right? We have testimonial, call to action to purchase, and then guarantee. And these three elements work very strongly together to convince the, the reader to become a buyer and to make a purchase. But that's not the end of the page. After this, we dive in and have more testimonials. Here could, you could list you know, almost as many testimonials as you have. You can just keep listing them. And then we have more text, right? So we have one or even several more text blocks. And at this point, you have to think about like the psychology of the person visiting the page. They've heard about your story. They have seen some social proof. They've seen the guarantee. They've seen the product, but they haven't purchased yet. They're still scrolling. So we're hitting them with more social proof to try and convince them. And this is also to kind of appease their worries, right? They're, you know, is this a good product? Will this really deliver on its promise? So we have many, many testimonials saying, yes, this will deliver on its promise. It's great. And then we have more text where you can address objections. So think about, you know, what are the last objections that someone might have before they make a purchase? What are the things that are still holding them back? At this point, you can assume if they're still reading this far down, you can assume that they understand the product and they, you know, they relate to this. This is important to them. They haven't, because if this thing doesn't apply to them, if the product is just, you know, they're not in the target market, they've left long before they get this far down the page. So at this point, you can assume that they're mostly on board, but maybe they're worried that, you know, maybe the price is too high. So you, you want to talk about how much more value they get out of the product than the price or, you know, the money they're, they're parting with and so on. So here you can address these last objections and then we go into the second call to action where once again, 
we present the purchase button with a strong headline and then we end that with a quote and a signature. It could also just be another paragraph of text and the signature um, to give it that personal touch, to make it clear, you know, I'm buying something from a real person. And then we have a PS, a postscriptum section. So here you can add several more lines, which are basically just like um, telling the reader, you know, if you don't make this decision now, you lose more than if you risk it and purchase this product. That's the high level overview over how the structure of this entire page works. So now let's have a look at why this is a hybrid sales page and why we chose this kind of page and also have a look at, in a bit more detail at the individual elements on the page. So a traditional sales letter and you've probably or you've maybe seen some of these, they're, they're not that easy to come across anymore. But a traditional sales letter is quite literally a letter which contains only text or almost only text. And it will contain, you know, short paragraphs, it will contain subheadings and things that grab your attention, but it's almost all text. And it's the traditional copywriting style of selling something is to, you know, to tell this story, to get these emotions and then make the pitch. And this can be very effective, but it's also true that the web is just getting more and more visual. And, you know, there's a good reason why people used to say with some pride that ugly pages sell, ugly pages convert. You don't really hear anyone say that anymore and you don't see these pages used anymore because the web has become more and more visual. And, um, you know, I think that's just something that has changed over time. However, the principles of a long form sales letter are still true and they still work. They still apply today. A more typical sales page that you see today is all about the product and it's shorter and it's very, very visual. It uses a lot of graphics to explain and illustrate what the product is about. Now that also has merits, but it often misses this kind of relating to your visitor element. The hybrid sales page, the goal here is simply to use both of these. And I'll link below to a post by Joanna YB. I'm not sure if that's how her last name is pronounced, but she wrote a great piece on hybrid sales pages, what they're about and how they work. So I'll link to that below as well. What you basically have here is a page that combines the storytelling elements of a long form sales letter with great design, beautiful design that keeps the person engaged, that, that leads the eye the right way and also has a few visual elements sprinkled in between. So you're trying to combine the best of both worlds. Now let's take a closer look at some of these elements. First of all, we have these text blocks and the text blocks usually contain a heading or a subheading and then a few paragraphs of text and maybe some, you know, maybe a quote, maybe some highlight, maybe a text box or something. So you want to break up the content a little bit, make it easier to read. So even though we're working with a lot of text here, you never want to present a wall of text. You never want to present this thing where it's just, you know, endless text. So you break it up into paragraphs, you break it up with subheadings. And we have these great dividers that give, you know, give everything a bit of room to breathe. The, the, are just a great visual element on the page and also lead the eye and encourage readers to keep reading. And this text block is almost the most important element on this page. This is what you'll use the most. And here is where the storytelling element comes from. You might have some negative associations with this. So you might think, you know, this is a typical kind of scammy looking sales letter where someone goes, oh, you know, whatever. I used to be fat and unhappy and unhealthy and I tried all these things and then I discovered the secret magic pill that made me lose weight and so on. And, and that is kind of the typical type of story that would be told. It would be kind of the rags to riches story or the hero's journey where someone recounts how they used to be a total failure at whatever and they tried everything, it didn't work and then they found the magic solution, okay? And, and yes, that's often very questionable. However, you can tell a story. The, the point here is that you're trying to make a connection with the person you're talking to, right? Instead of jumping right in and saying, hey, here's a product, buy it, give me money. You go, no, look, let's, let's talk about this, right? Let's talk about this. Like in a, in a face to face sales process, we kind of, first we get to know each other. And first we, we demonstrate that, Hey, I'm a real person. I know what you're going through. I understand this. So let me give you an example of what a story could be, even for a product like thrive landing pages, this can be sold with a story as well. And the story here could be that 
it could be about me or it could be about someone else. I'm sure you've seen the kind of thing where it's, you know, this is Bob, he has a small business, blah, blah, blah. So I could do that or I could talk about myself and I could say, I used to have this online business and this website and I put my heart and soul into it, but I wasn't making any money. This wasn't working for me. And I tried to figure out why. And I bought these books, I read these books, I, I tried these different systems and courses and whatnot. And some of it worked and some of it didn't. And it was a long struggle to figure out what was going on. And then I discovered a few things. And here is where you can add a teaching part to the story. So it can be story plus teaching. So in this section I could talk about, maybe I discovered, you know, one of the things I was missing was I was missing out on the chance to do some long-term selling to people coming to my web website. So people were just coming to my website and leaving and I never see them again. So what I started to do is I started to build a mailing list and I did this by, I tried various different things and I did this, I ended up doing this, setting up a certain funnel and now I can explain and illustrate what this funnel looks like, what my email marketing setup looks like. And this is some actual valuable content within the sales page, right? So I'm actually doing some teaching along with the selling. You can think of it like this, a typical sales strategy on websites is that you have a blog where you also post some useful, valuable content, right? And the idea is that people find this content, they get use out of it, they get a better impression of your brand, and they eventually they think, oh, you know, this content is good, I'm going to check out this product as well, and they're kind of warmed up and much more likely to buy the product. Now, you're taking that same process that a website has, you know, has a sales page here and the blog here, and you're compressing that into a single page. So you do your storytelling and your teaching on that page. So again, I can continue my story and I can say, okay, you know, these are the setups, these are the pages I created. After all this tinkering, after all this hard work, I paid all this money to designers and so on and so forth. I ended up with this setup and it worked really well for me. And it finally made my business profitable. And then I was like, okay, let's do this again. Let's build a new business. I was thinking, so I have to do this whole thing again now? That's, that's horrible. So I needed a solution for this, right? Instead of spending all this time and all this money, and the solution was I needed templates. And that then leads into the product, right? So now we have templates. In this case, it would be Thrive Landing Pages where all of this stuff is done for you. You don't have to hire a designer. You don't have to do all this stuff. You just take the template of what works already. You apply it instantly and you get the result and you can skip all this agony that I went through. So this does two things. First of all, you know, my target audience will be able to relate to that. They have a business, they have a website. And they've had struggles with that for sure, right? Everybody has these kind of issues. Um, and then, so they can relate to that. It's kind of an emotional connection there. I teach them something valuable and then I lead in to my product. That is what the storytelling part is about. And don't be afraid to tell a long story, right? It is called a long form sales letter. And the idea is that you do two things. First of all, you tell a story and make it as compelling as possible. And secondly, you make it, you address everything that needs to be addressed, all right? So in the end, once you've written all of this stuff, you should address everything that your product does, everything, every value, every bit of value that people get out of it, and every possible objection that people might have as to why they don't want to buy it. Right? And all of that should be addressed. And that's one of the things that makes the page long. And don't be afraid to make it long because here we get back to the design part, okay? We deliberately break this up into these sections with subheadings, with short paragraphs. We sprinkle in some images and Im illustrations along the way. And we do that very deliberately because this helps people scan through the page. So some people will come to this page and they'll start reading at the top and they'll just keep reading until they reach the very end. But most people won't. Most people will scan. And as they're scrolling through the page, the idea is that a heading or maybe a quote or maybe an image will catch their attention and they'll be like, oh yeah, this is interesting for me. And then they'll read a few paragraphs and then they'll keep scanning and so on. And people might scan up and down this page until they finally make the decision to buy. So that's where the visual element becomes very, very important and where the design of this page becomes very, very powerful. All right, then a few more details. So for example, we have this nice list section. A list is another great way to get people who are scrolling to stop scrolling and read a bit more. 
And we've highlighted that even further by adding this green background, this page section background. So this is really eye-catching, a great way to list a couple of benefits or list a couple of points that you learned or summarize some of the story above and so on. Another point is that once you actually get to the product, you want to illustrate that product. And you can see we have a very appealing product section here where you have a, an image that shows the product. So even if it's a digital product, it really helps to show some kind of a, a representation that makes the product look more real. So here you put in your, your cover graphic or whatever your product graphic is. And we also have this list. We just have a very compelling overall design for this product section. Then the testimonials are also an extremely important conversion element on a page like this. And I encourage you to read the copy and the first few testimonials to learn why they look the way they do and to learn how to kind of create the perfect testimonial whenever you add your own to the page. All right, and with that, I want to jump back to the very top of the page and quickly talk about what's going on here. So here we have a large top page section with a large, large heading, a subheading, a video, and then the caption text below the video. Now, this assumes that you have a video to add to your sales page. And just keep in mind, right? You, can, you don't have to have this video. You can just get rid of it. You also don't have to have the top section at all. You can move everything into the content box. You can move the video into the content box if you want. I mean, you can do anything you want, right? This is, this is Thrive Landing Pages. You can customize anything. So keep that in mind, right? You're not locked into this. But the idea would be if you do have a video sales letter here, what, what would you put into the video? And essentially, you put the same thing in the video that is in the page below it, all right? You can really just, you can be completely redundant with this, and that's okay to do. And what you could do is actually test the text-only version versus the video versus video plus text. But the idea is really just, just like you write the content in such a way that it appeals to people who read everything, and it also appeals to people who scan through it, in the same way, adding the video is just appealing, it's just widening the, the audience, right? Because some people would much rather listen to a video than read text, and some people would much rather read text than listen to a video. Um, so you simply give people the option there, right? And it, it's also in a combination. Some people will start watching the video, they'll skip through it, and then they'll stop and start scanning. And in the end, they get the whole story after all because they got parts of it from the video and parts of it from the text. And the important thing is that you get them to read or consume as much as possible of this content because that's what eventually turns into a buying decision. All right, so that's an overview of the copy sales page. And as I said, the sales page itself is a tutorial for how to use the sales page. So I encourage you to look at that. And I just wanted to also make this video to give you a better understanding of how to create a high converting page like this and also show you that, you know, we didn't, and this is what something we want to do with all our templates. We could have easily just created a very simple sales page template and said, you know, here you go, use this. But really that's not enough. What we want to do here is we want to make intelligent pages. So we put a lot of thought into what exactly is this page for and how can it be made as effective as possible? And the copy sales page is a good example of that philosophy. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video and please feel free to ask questions or make suggestions by leaving a comment below. If you want to know more about how to make this work for your business, go ahead and ask a question. You can also jump in the forum and ask there and we'll be happy to help you out. All right, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon when we have some more news and updates for you.